Hello, in my last video I explained that I was going to make some changes to the heating system that I've installed in a brand new house. In this picture I've tried to show the alterations that I'm proposing to make. I'm going to remove the pump and mixing valve from the underfloor heating. I'm also going to take the pump that's currently serving the first and second floor radiators and I'm going to fit that on the flow directly out of the buffer vessel. These are just a few speeded up clips of me actually making the alterations. The reason I'm making these alterations is because if you take a look at one of my previous videos, when I initially commissioned this system, everything seemed to be working just fine. But after a while, I thought the heat pump was frosting up a little bit too regularly for my liking. So after receiving a few helpful comments and some research on this matter, this is the action that I uh, decided to take. In these pictures you can see the alterations have been completed. Initially I was a little bit concerned that by removing the underfloor heating pump there might not be enough flow through the underfloor heating circuits. But as you can see from this clip there's a good flow through all 10 circuits. So once I was happy with the alterations, I decided to let the system settle down for a few days and then return to check it out. So according to this thermometer, at the back of the property, the ambient temperature is minus five. The first thing I did when entering the property was I went round all of the zones and checked the readings on the thermostats. And what I mean by the zones is um, on the ground floor, all the rooms, each room is a separate zone and I'm classing the first floor as a zone and the second floor as a zone. As you can see, the average was about 19 degrees centigrade in every zone. Bearing in mind the flow temperature from the heat pump was set at around 30 degrees C. In this clip you can see I've got the temperature sensors from my gas analyzer on the primary flow and the return from the heating and um, the delta T is around 8. You can also see that the, um, the, temperature f the flow temperature from the heat pump is around 31 degrees. Now I know there'll be a little bit of blending within the buffer vessel. So I expect the primary flow and the secondary flow out of the buffer vessel to um, be at slightly different temperatures. So next you're looking at a um, time lapse of the heat pump running over the course of about half an hour. As before, I've placed thermostats at various positions on the heat pump. After being in position for about 10 minutes, these are the readings the thermostats were showing. After 15 minutes you can see how the temperatures have changed and that clock's not shaking because it's cold but it's just the heat pump is um, working harder and therefore um, a little bit more vibration than usual. I've now fitted what let's call it a ribbon to the grill of the heat pump so you can see that it's actually running. That chattering noise is just the clock vibrating. So there we are. After about 20 minutes, the heat pump shuts down and goes into defrost mode. It defrosts for approximately five minutes, then starts up again. That's when you see that vapor plume just as it starts up. Then as you can see, the frosting up starts um, almost immediately. The temperature readings are going up slightly because the ambient temperature is actually rising. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is just a second defrost cycle that I thought I'd show you on the same day, um, just for your reference really. This is the same clip as before, but at a different angle and in real time. And as you can see, as the um, heat pump gets more frosted up, the action of the ribbon really changes. This is because, as far as I can tell, the frost has blocked the airways through the condenser. This is obviously um, affecting the efficiency of the heat pump. If you haven't already subscribed, I wonder if you would consider doing so. It is free and it really helps. Thank you. This is the same clip, slightly speeded up, showing um, the real change in the action of the ribbon. You can hear by the tone of the heat pump that it's shutting down ready to go straight into defrost mode. I think that sound that you just heard was the valve within the heat pump switching from heating to cooling. And the gurgling sound was possibly the refrigerant from within the heat pump. Here you can see what happens to the pipework temperatures when the heat pump is defrosting. The flow temperature has dropped to 24, the return temperature is around 27 and we have a delta T of minus 3. This is because the heat pump is extracting heat from the heating system to carry out its defrost cycle. In conclusion, I think these um, alterations have made a difference to the system. Just the removal of the underfloor heating pump has saved a tiny little bit of energy. And even though the heat pump is going into defrost mode every half an hour approximately, today I still recorded a COP of 3.5. A Daikin engineer is booked to come and visit within the next couple of days just to give the system a once over. As far as I know, this was all part of the package when the builder purchased all of the equipment. I'd like to thank everybody who's commented for their good constructive um, comments but unfortunately the question still remains is this heat pump oversized undersized in the wrong location or just low on refrigerant hopefully in the next few days i'll get a resolution on this issue and when i do i'll post a video explaining everything if you've managed to reach the end of this video i commend you and if you've liked and subscribed i thank you very much thank you on a different note, if you're bored of heat pumps, perhaps you might want to look at my other channel where I attempt to carry out repairs on my Land Rover. Thank you.